Hi everyone, um, so this is the XL Semi, XL 6009E1 and I've already done a video or two about this but here's another one. So um, I'll just zoom out. So I bought a whole load more of these and um, there's something interesting about them and that is um, this load that I bought appears to be different to the previous load. It seems to be better. So what I want to know is, what is the actual maximum voltage I can get out of this and um, what's the maximum amount of amperage I can get out of it? Um, so if you look at eBay listings, they come out with all sorts of different values, but what's the actual value? And that's what this video is going to be about. So to start with, I'm just going to do a quick um, demonstration, or actually an investigation, into what I can get out of it straight away. Um, and I'm going to do this using my DC power supply. So I'll just zoom out. Alright, let's see what I can get out of it right now. So I'm going to connect up my DC power supply. So in minus, in plus. So we've got 13 volts there on my DC power supply. I'll just show you. 13 volts, then back over here. So 13 volts. Now I'm going to get my voltmeter and let's just measure what we can get out of this. 47 volts. I take it that's probably the maximum. I'll just get a screwdriver and then um, I'll try to get more voltage out of it. 47.7. No, it's not going anymore. So I'm getting out of this 47.7 volts. Now that's incredibly useful because it means it, it means that I can have a supply from um, whatever it said, 2 to 30 volts and I can step up to 47.7. That's brilliant. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the documentation. So, um, oh and the eBay listings too. So we've got 47.7 volts out of it just then. And that's impressive. So, um, what does eBay say I can get out of it? And more importantly, what do the spec docs say I can get out of it? So let's just have a quick look at it first. Let's just examine what we've got here. So we've got the actual XL Semi chip. So XL Semi 6009E1 so I'm going to need to look at that document, um, the spec sheet for that particular chip. Uh, what else we got here? It'd be useful if I went from in first. So we've got what looks like a smoothing capacitor for the in, and in is clearly 35 volts maximum. But that's okay because I don't care about the input too much. Then we've got an inductor. Um, so the inductor. I'll need to check the amperage of that, assuming that it comes from in through the inductor to here, which I'll have to check. Potentiometer doesn't matter because that will be probably less than 5 volts. Um, the chip I've already mentioned, there's a sharp key diode there. I'll need to make sure that that's um, able to deal with an amount of current because you can see here um, that's connected to the plus of the amp, so all current's flowing through that, so I'll need to check that. Finally, the capacitor, which I'm, I'm not worried about, it says 50 volts, so it seems to make sense. So I think we probably can get the full 47 volts or whatever I've just got. Anyway, so I'll move on and I'll have a quick look at the documentation. Okay, so the first place we need to look is on the actual eBay listing itself. So, um, I've bought 5 units for £4.33, just as a side point, so it's very cheap. Anyway, let's see what we can find. Well, that's to do with dimensions, so that doesn't interest me. Um, let's just go down. Test comparison sample. Not sure exactly what that's. Oh, there's just some uh, uh, examples of use. Uh, input voltage. Right, 4 amp. So that's the first indicator. So it seems to be able to cope with 4 amps. Um, wide input range, that's good, but it doesn't really interest me too much. Output voltage, this interests me. So it's claiming the output voltage will be 35 volts. 
Um, well, I've just shown you that that's not true because I've just got 47 volts out of it. So, yeah, we need to find out what's going on. Built 4 amp efficient MOSFET. Okay, 4 amps, so there we go again. 4 amps. Um, small capacitor, delta capacitors. Yep, fine. Again, 35 volts output range. 4 amps maximum. Alright, so according to the eBay listing, the output is 35 volts, 4 amps max. Okay, so far so good. So now uh, let's have a look at the actual manufacturers and see what they say. So here's the data sheet and let's see what this says. Well, straight away I can see that it says 60V4A. So 60 volts output, I assume, 4 amps output. So let's read further. It says here maximum 4 amp switching current. So 4 amps. Um, it's a picture of the pinout. Any more info? There's a, an application circuit which actually looks pretty much identical to the one that I'm holding right now, which is the one I've just shown you. We've got an inductor and I've got an inductor. It's 33 micro Henry, which mine is, oh, mine says 330, so I'm not sure if mine's, you know, 330, well, I'll be measured in Henry, but it's is it micro Henry? I don't know. Um, but anyway, we've got a diode. I've got a shock key SS34, so we'll look at that. Um, everything else appears to be kind of the same. Um, mine's variable, so this is fixed. Um, so my resistors are different here. I've got a potentiometer. Um, anything else that's interesting? Oh, this is interesting. Input voltage 0 to 36, feedback pin. That's to maintain a voltage. Enable pin, that's to enable the actual chip itself, or in other words, get it working. Output switch, pin voltage, ah, right, okay. So the output is 0 to 60 volts. So that's interesting. So it is 60 volts. And the rest of that I'm not worried about. Anything else interesting here? Um... Uh, let's see, shut down supply current, switch current limit. Alright, so there's a switch current limit of 4 amps. So this is a 4 amp module, and it can deliver 4 amps according to this. That's duty cycle 90%. Oh, this is interesting as well, shock key diode selection table. So my shock key diode is SS34, was it, or was it 32? 34, which is not in the list. Um, VR, same as this system maximum input voltage. Maximum input voltage, surely it means output voltage. Okay, um, so... There's a selection of diodes. So, of course, your diode matters. If you've got a 1 amp diode, you can't expect to deliver 4 amps. So, I'll need to check that as well. Um, we've got another example circuit and another example circuit. And then some more details here. So, as far as I can tell, this actually is a 60 volt 4 amp uh, boost converter. So, what else is there to consider? Well, there's the inductor, which I don't think I'm going to be able to find any details on because it simply says 330. Um, the capacitors, I don't think is going to be an issue because I can see them labelled at 50 volts and 35 volts, so that's not going to be an issue either. The only thing I can think of checking out is the diode. So, the diode that I've got is SS34, so let's have a look down here and we'll see what it says about the diode. Um, primary characteristics, 3 amps, so I assume that's for all of them. So this is a 3 amp diode. Um, let's see what else it says here. SS34, there it is. 
maximum repetitive peak reverse voltage. Well, I'm not. Mine's not going to be exposed to reverse voltages that I know of. Um, maximum RMS voltage. There will be no RMS voltage that I'm aware of. Maximum DC blocking voltage. I'm not expecting to block anything. Uh, what else have we got here? Maximum average forward certified current. Right, okay. So we've got an issue here. A diode can only deal with 3 amps. So that's interesting. So if all that current flows directly through the um, diode, which it does, then we're limited to 3 amps. So the diode is only um, certified for 3 amps. So that doesn't mean it can't go more than that, but it's not advisable to go over that. So the diode is limiting the whole module to 3 amps. So that's interesting. We'll carry on reading. So, as far as I can tell, um, the actual chip itself can deliver 4 amps at up to 60 volts. But because I've got this uh, shock key barrier rectifier, it looks like I'm stuck to 3 amps. Maybe I could push it slightly, but I wouldn't want to go too mad with that. So, 3 amps. So, this module should be able to output 3 amps at up to 60 volts. Now, in my module itself, for whatever reason, I can't get over 47 volts, but that's fine. Um, so, that's very interesting. So, let's have a quick look down here again. Let's find out a bit more about this circuit. So, the voltage comes in, and it apparently goes through an inductor. Inductors don't do anything, though, with DC voltage, so I'm not sure what's going on there at the moment. So we've got a capacitor here, which is looks like a smoothing capacitor or something. Then we've got the XL6009 connected to ground, or it's ground connected to ground. We've got two connected to uh, chip enable, which it says here, on is high. Um, we've got the feedback pin, so the output the output voltage goes through a voltage divider and an amount goes back to the feedback pin and then I would imagine that it loops and uh, continues regulating the voltage. And then we've got two output capacitors there. And then here we've got V out. So what's going on here? I'm not exactly sure. Let's, let's try and find out. So we've got voltage in going through an inductor. So it's interesting that's a 4 amp inductor because that seems to suggest to me that this is an this input is also going as an output as well and up to four amps, so that's interesting. Um, so what else? So we've got SWA SW, which is pin three. Which let's see what that is. Pin three power switch output pin. So that seems to be the output um, See if we can find anything. So there's, these are amplifiers to amplify the voltage. All right, I can understand this circuit, but there's one thing I don't understand. Oh, there's the diode, by the way, and the diode is to prevent current uh, going back into the switch and into V in. So yeah, there's one thing I don't understand, and that is. Why this current here, why this uh, voltage and current here can flow directly through here to the output? Um, that's a little bit odd. So I think what's also happening is it's coming in here, and it's being amplified, and it's obviously switched and added to this, um, added to the power here, added to this this line. So if you were to feed 12 volts in, 12 volts would go out here, but also there'd be um, an amount of that which is amplified and also fed through here. But what I don't understand is why there's an inductor there. Um, yeah, I don't really understand that because there's no AC current flowing through that there, so why would we need an inductor? Um, and also, why would we need a 4 amp inductor? Um, okay, so I don't I don't 100% understand that, that diagram, but this is the module that I've got in my hand, and this is what I've got, and um, it's useful nevertheless. 
So, um, so there we go. So I hope that has explained a little bit to you at least about this little module.